I'm here with my good friend Victor Odo today and we're really excited to be talking about navigating spiritual awakening and also how to follow your heart and your soul. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me, Bridget. Thanks so much for being here. You're welcome. Yeah. So we've all been going through a lot. 2020 was a lot for everyone, right? Yeah. And this yeah. year as well. And in the years past with spiritual awakening, it was already a lot. Like just energetically getting the upgrades, navigating things. But now it's also on like a physical level. Like people yeah. are either in lockdowns or moving or faced with big changes and big decisions. Mm -hmm. How have you been navigating that? Or what's coming up in your own life transitions right now? Yeah, there's a lot going on. One thing that came to mind though is I think it's really nice that like people like you, me, and folks that are you know listeners of us, um, have experience with sort of change being imposed upon them. Yeah. So we've been dealing with it in our own little microcosmic lives. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, now we're seeing it reflected out there in the collective. So even though it's sort of, even for me and you, I'm sure it's been like challenging at times and yeah. like, oh wow, I really have to dig deep and, and think outside of the box. There's some sense of familiarity with it and, and like a, a sense of trust that, yeah. okay, I've been going through these shifts on my own. They've been crazy at times, but they've been slowly leading me towards a better and better life. Yeah. And I can kind of have that sense of trust with the collective, whereas many people, they see what's happening and they're like, oh my goodness, you can't blame them for going into fear. Yeah. Um, but anyway, what's been happening with me, it's been like a big shift in like my focus of purpose, mm -hmm. which has happened multiple times. And it's not easy, as you know. Yeah. I know, like you, didn't you say you used to... Um, you painted out in LA and then there was probably a calling to come out here and yeah. how was that for you? Yeah, it was a big, big shift and it took a lot of courage and a lot of right. change. But I do feel like following the call with what you just said, following the call and hearing it early, you don't get as slapped. Mm, yes. Right? If you hear it early on, even though it can be harder to make that change, it's not the universe having to force you in a way. To yeah. Changes. Don't they say like God whispers of it and then he knocks at the door and then he busts it open with a freaking hammer? Right. Yeah. You, the more sensitive you become, the more you get to like be pick up on the whispers. Exactly. And same here. Just like for me, the way it looks is like uh, there is uh, a growing dissonance between whatever I'm doing or whatever circumstance I'm sort of feeling called from within to shift out of. There's just a sense of like, hmm, things aren't flowing, things aren't clicking, I'm meeting an unusual amount of resistance. Yeah. Usually parallel to that, there's like an excitement or a fondness for something over elsewhere, mm. but it's not solid. It's not enough to go on, but it's like, hmm. And usually when I start to sense that, then I know it's something is changing. And for me, it's always very inconvenient feeling, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like uh, the first time I was a personal trainer, I spent my whole life, you know, being in the fitness guy. And then it was like, Drop all of that momentum, <laughs> 10 years of you know hard work, and do something completely different with zero certainty it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Get on YouTube. Yeah. And then I thought, I was so happy that I followed that calling years ago, and now I'm on YouTube, as you know. And then I was very almost surprised and a little annoyed that it started to happen again. Like, man, I got finally established again on YouTube, mm -hmm. and now it's like, become an author, write a book. I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't, I've never written a book. It's so daunting. Yeah. So that's been where I'm at now. It's like I'm being sort of led again by spirit to right. follow this other path, mm -hmm. which, which of course, as you know, involves doing less and less of what you were doing. Yeah. Jumping further and further into the unknown. So it's not been easy. I, I talk about it sort of casually now, but there have been moments of like, you know, this is bullshit. I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> ah! I'm so comfortable, you know? Yeah. So I'm hearing that there's a resistance that, or a resistance that comes up from the universe, like big changes wanting to happen when these things are happening. You know, things are a little bit more hard, and then this newness starts to open. So there's like a letting go, but then there's a new creation simultaneous. Yeah. What do you do in that liminal space when you don't quite know what it is yet? Like, how do you get deeper clarity or do you just wait or what do you do in that in-between space? Because I feel like a lot of people are there right now. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, uh -huh, we're in the middle. And, you know, how do you, yeah, take that next step? Yeah, it's, it's not going to be advice that if they listen to it, people want to hear. But <laughs> in my experience, do let me know if I'm wrong. I find that in those moments, it's like, it means I need to let go a little more. Mm -hmm. and the more I let go, the more clarity tends to come. But so, sometimes it's a matter of just being patient and like, you know, life on earth, it, it, sometimes it's a bit of a, takes time in the process. So sometimes I don't think there's always a, a need to act, but oftentimes when I get stuck and it feels prolonged and I lack the clarity, it's like, oftentimes for me, it means I'm holding on to something. Oh, both of those are really good points. You know, I, I have found that as we are uh, these spiritual beings and we awaken to more of that where we feel in our creatorship that we're instant manifestors and we're like, no, why isn't it happening overnight? But right. there is this time component to this yeah. reality that's very real and we can easily tune in or empath like those future timelines, but they might take longer to get here. Yes. So I really agree with the time piece and then surrendering. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that was a key. That was a good one. Yeah. Of the fastest way to get to that next level of clarity and to just have everything flow. Yeah, and that's that's actually the first word that popped in my head when you asked that was the word was trust. Mm. In those times, you you trust, mm. and it's hard. It's hard to trust, but you can choose to. You can choose to say, you know what, I'm going to just trust that things are going to work out. And yeah. for me, that puts me in a different mindset where I start seeing the positive of the situation, see becoming more hopeful. And yeah. thinking, wow, maybe this can work, even yeah. though I don't see how just yet. Um, so, yeah, trust, surrender is difficult. But these transitions, I find, make me, like, much better at that. Because mm. trust and surrender are, are valuable in many cases in life. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm, like, when I feel, like, in those situations, it can become so stressful. So, like, oh, my goodness, like, what is happening? Yeah. When I question everything. And when I get like that, then it's, like... I sink deeper into trust mm -hmm. and then that that ability to trust it translates into many areas of life yeah it seems like your uh personal training is coming back into oh, <laughs> in handy maybe. in the sense that it is i feel like building a muscle you know where it is the it's cumulative the more that you practice trust the more that you practice surrender the better and easier it gets when it does come up again yeah yeah and, and one of the one of the reasons i think is because when that happens things get really good eventually. There's always, a, there's always right. a point where it's like, wow, I thank God I trusted that because this is amazing. I could have never conjured this or planned mm. for it or carefully worked my way towards it. I see why I had to play out that way. And thank goodness it did because, man, I'm happy now. And, yeah. and it, the universe proves itself to you, I it, find. I completely find that. And then when the bigger letting go happens, like I'm in a, quite a few areas in big periods of letting go. Last year I did huge surrender and then this year it's like next level mm. and I'm just in that in between place where I have experience of it working I've experienced the universe just handing me just amazing opportunities and I'm just going oh will you really do it this time you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah right exactly that's right. like how it realistically goes yes. for me too <laughs> yes yeah so in this uh period of spiritual awakening and this transition right now especially in this time are you getting any spiritual insights or breakthroughs yourself of what's going on collectively or also you know where we're at on the next level of our transition in our spiritual awakening yeah i would say at least 2020 there was so much going on in 2020 and for me i didn't get a lot of intuitive collective hit it was more like i just knew for myself the time to be present and observe and yeah. do my best yeah. and there's like no time to do that it's like I just got to live my own <laughs> life and hold space for my family my myself yeah um now I sense that yeah I, I feel like 2020 was like a disruptor in many people's lives mm -hmm. and now there's like new stuff coming in pop seeds of like spirit coming in saying hey out of all this rubble maybe there's like this opportunity for a new life and I think that's kind of what's happening with at least some people, maybe quite a few people, I don't know. Um, so I feel like it's like the seeds of a, a, a total new way of life. But I think that will require a big change. As I was talking with you, like right. the metaphor is moving to Sedona. Yeah. And moving to a very high vibe place requires a cleaning up of the daily habits and really a surrendering to just a very different lifestyle that's foreign, 
but also very attractive. So I, I feel like people have an opportunity now to move into like a higher vibrational way of living, however that means for them, more purpose, more true love, more true just depth of life. But again, it requires a lot of the surrender we're discussing. Yeah. That's my take. I mean, what do you think? There's a lot of other yeah. spin-off things, obviously, I, with I the collective stuff. I definitely agree. I was listening back to one of Aaron's videos about star seeds because we just did a podcast together. And he was talking about how 2020, like the year of clarity, like we were all saying, like 2020, year of clarity. It's the year of clarity looking into the, the dismal depths of the subconscious wreckage of humanity and ourselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. It's like, that's not what we thought we wanted to see. We're like, right. we want to see the like shiny angels, but right. you know, so it was true. Yeah. So I do feel like it was therefore then demolished, like any ego structures or the things that we had falsely built up to be ourselves or to yeah. be our world, right? So right. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah. And, and what you said too, it's never pleasant to look that deeply into the shadow of existence or, or yeah. humanity, but it's like that's the way to, that's the way to make change. You Absolutely. need to see what the situation is. It's not comfortable. It's yeah. not pretty, but it's like how else are we going to make, you know, conscious, wise, positive changes? Yeah. And I like what you were saying about these transitions and how they're uncomfortable. And what I was hearing in that is that it's also like letting go of deeper layers of conditioning and matrix. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, like a, a more high vibe lifestyle. This is actually what I want. But yeah. then when we're faced with it, it's like, do we really want to let go of those like threads right. to what we're used to, which is the matrix in a way? Yeah, that's exactly what it is for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I was all set on Sedona. It's, for those of you who don't know, I've been like battling. I was telling Bridget, where am I going to live with my family? Vegas, Las Vegas, or Sedona? Um, and I was all set on uh, Sedona. In a mo I, I've, been, I've gone back and forth, but yeah. then I talked to my mom, and she was like, wow, where's the nearest Target? You know, it's all these questions making me realize, wow, this would be a huge change <laughs> to live in a small town, yeah. very high vibrational place. Um, it's just not what I'm used to. Yeah. And it's like, though I feel like this could be amazing it's yeah. like am i ready i believe i am i believe you are thank you yeah <laughs> but it's still like when it's like all of us say oh i'd love to live a higher vibe lifestyle but when it comes down to it, when the opportunity comes at least as it's played out for me it's like right hmm i need to be also honest with where i'm at yeah that's really important that's good that you're discussing that with yourself yeah yeah <laughs> and with your family right but i hear you i mean my personal upgrade and transition in one category of my life is I am, shh, don't tell yet, but I am going to be living on Instagram. And that's oh, like a really strong guidance that I've been getting. And that, I mean, there's FOMO in that. There's, you know, there's a lot of different things that come up for me. But the alternative is me being in nature more. Is me being way more connected to myself, way more connected to presence, creating deeper content. You know, and yes. so, but it is, it is challenging. But it is a complete invitation for me mm -hmm. to live a higher vibe like lifestyle For sure. in wow. doing that. So it's, we all have our like different nuances where it's like, well, that's not a big deal or that's a huge deal, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's inspiring. I've had that thought many times. In fact, I usually have my, in fact, even right now, my Instagram is not even downloaded on my phone. Yeah. I will use it for specific reasons and that was better, but yeah. I still find it like seductive and it's like, just like I waste time on it. Yeah. And I know it's ridiculous. I know it's just unconscious browsing out of boredom right. and the need for stimulation, but it's I respect that <laughs> big time. And I also I also feel like it will help you as well, like really yeah. get to it. And that's why I feel the call to writing. Right. Because it's like right now you're so wrapped up in your social media presence that even though it's it's good, you could pull from a deeper part of yourself if you let go. And that's the commitment. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what both you and I are committed to is totally yeah. bringing through the deepest, you know, most authentic things for ourselves and therefore to share with others for yeah. the service of others. So when I'm really honest, I'm like, well, what does that look like? Yeah. You know, and it does mean big changes and it can be different forms like you with the writing mm -hmm. or like me with this podcast. We are filming yeah. it for YouTube, but there is something more intimate and deeper when it's just like the audio. Yeah. And it can be a long conversation where we don't just have to finish it up real quick, you know? Right, yeah. And yeah. there's just like zero, ex you're just like can totally be yourself in, in a deeper level of relaxation rather than I'm putting on some of a performance yes. to be interesting in people's perception. It's nothing wrong with that. It's part of it, but it's like, it's like a slight, 
like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like almost like a slight distortion or constriction of like the creative process. Yes. So exactly, and we want it to just flow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's why I think this whole people feeling called to things. It's like it's a chance to unravel a deeper level of their soul expression. Mm -hmm. And it'd be nice if we do it only the one time. But as you found, it's like. We just keep doing it. It's progressive. Yeah, but that's also beautiful as well. Yeah, it just keeps on going. Yeah. So if people haven't fully tapped into their soul purpose or soul calling, or they're ready for the next level up, because we said that it keeps on coming, Yeah. what are ways that people can tap into that and really start to align with that? Which I think gives deeper meaning, especially right now. I think there's a bit of an existential, like, what's going on here and what can I do? Yeah. So how can people align with that? I think, and I think you'll agree, for, at least for me, it's, like, it's action. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, they get hung up on, I want to know what my purpose is before I do it. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like a process of continual unraveling. Mm -hmm. Like for me, like writing the book, I felt all this guidance. Like, Victor, you have to write a book. Spirit guides coming in. Victor, it's time to write the book. Dreams waking me up in a sweat. It's time to write the book. And I'm like, well, what book? What is it going to be? I, I don't know. And I was waiting for that next little download, but it never came. So I just started writing whatever. And I've written like a third of many books. I've written and explored many titles and a lot of it, most of it, I won't even use. But that, ex that raw, uh, imperfect experimentation leads to the clarity mm -hmm. and leads to like that, ah, now, now it's finally flowing through like a year and a half later. So how do people get on it? And it's like stop waiting around. Start start doing the best with what you have. Go with what you go go, go with whatever you know at, at, in the moment, and, yeah. and know it's going to be enough to lead to that next step. Oh. Just like Bashar, he just had yeah. this recent. Uh, a re I just listened to a recent thing on the way here from Las Vegas, and it was like the theme was just a step along the way mm. or something. Just a step along the way. A lot of people want to know the destination before yeah. they make their way towards it. Yeah step along the way yeah i love that Me and too. then and then also you were just saying unabashed creativity which is what we were just speaking on earlier just yeah. to let it fly like experimentation you don't know how it's gonna look and not trying to i think that a lot of people now especially with social media world it's like you want to be able to frame it somehow before mm -hmm. it's even taken form yeah and so you can't right because it's still in process yep but it's like no i need to package it or i need to you know or it needs to look a certain way so that freedom of expression is something i'm hearing yeah and i don't know about you but for me it's very difficult it's very like emotionally it seem like it is for you well people say that but they don't see i guess behind the okay, scenes okay okay it is like I'll, I'll go to the mountains and i'll meditate and i'll like nothing will come out in the writing <laughs> or i'll write for an hour and i'll hate it and I'll, or, and then I'll, or I'll have like three days where it's flowing through and I'm thinking, I got it. This is it. The purpose is coming through me. And then it's like a dry spell for two weeks. So it's a very unpredictable process. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's, it's like challenging, but also it's, it's rewarding enough. It's like catching a fish. It's like you're fishing. There's nothing going on. All of a sudden you get a big one. It's like when the muse shows up and, and it's clicking, it's all worth it. Have you read Big Magic by Elizabeth Yeah, Summer? I love it. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Where it's like the muse, you're like yeah. waiting for the muse or continuing. And I feel like when you said taking action on it, that feeds the yes and the commitment to the muse for yeah. her to show up for you. It does, yeah. Right? And would you say that the muse, this is, I don't know why I'm going in this direction, but it's <laughs> kind of fun. <laughs> but do, would you say that the muse is similar to spirit guides? Or like how do you perceive the, yeah. that inspiration as it comes through? Yeah, the muse I would say is like, creative guidance, creative, mm -hmm. creative energy, expression, passion, like yeah. where like when I'm like writing, there's times where it's just writing itself. Mm -hmm. It's like an act of grace almost where I'm like, wow, where did that come from? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not always like that. How is your book going? It's going better. Yeah. Now yeah. it's turning into something yeah. finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not taking was, form. And, and like going back to our conversation, I was putting too many restrictions on it, too many mental uh. labels of what it should be. Right. Instead of just writing it and seeing like what, what can I open up to, mm -hmm. and now it's like taking on kind of a life of its own. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So if someone's at the place where they don't even. How do they get the message? Because you you said that you got it in like this dream that you were woken up or this or that. What are other ways that people can get that initial stirring or that whisper from God yeah. to take action on? What are some of the ways that that comes through? 
I think it's like a sense of organic excitement, like something, ah, that's like someone might, you know, be browsing online and, and see something about like a Reiki certification and just something about it just is like appealing. Like, oh, this is very interesting. There's a natural, a, like a real fondness for it, not for anything it could do for them, but just like, huh, I think a childlike interest in something. Mm -hmm. and I know some people, they don't have that at all. Right. And that's, that can be a block and that's because, you know, and realistically some people, they've, uh, they've they've like gone on a path that's not really authentic to them for so long mm. that they become aware of it. Then they, they don't even know who they are. They don't even know what the heck, where to start. Right. And then it's just a matter of letting go a lot and then trusting and it'll come. So in those moments where these people are far off from the track, you're saying letting go, you know, like just letting yeah, go. Usually the first step I think is like, this is not working. <laughs> this doesn't resonate, this relationship, this career, you don't like it. Stop lying to yourself. Uh, Even though you think you need it, if it really creates that much disruption in your like psyche and emotional body, it's not a fit. And then it's like the more you let go, the more be revealed, I find. Yeah. So self honesty. Yeah. Is the key thing. Even so like entertaining the idea, like admitting, I don't ooh, like this job. It's some people are afraid to I think some people are afraid to admit that it's so scary. Yeah. If I don't like this job and I want to quit, but I have no idea what else to do, geez, that's the scary thing right. but even entertaining that I think will open them up to more of like what they're looking for which is like clarity and guidance I think that's really nice permission yeah because it's almost like in that in the mainstream narrative it's like you can't even don't even think like you know right. outside of the container of whatever that selective thing is that's that's bad yeah and so being like no like you can you can explore what this is yep and in the exploration itself and is a imaginative, almost like visual process, which I think can lead to the inspiration Definitely. as well. Definitely, yeah. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. So what else is going on for you right now? Or what other big kind of insights or helpful tools have been coming through mm. for you? Actually, I was actually going to mention it to you as an alternative topic. I've been going yeah. through, over the past few years, a lot of ancestral healing. Have you? Yeah, straight up. Yeah, big straight time. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and that's been very interesting. I yeah. don't know if you want to spin off too much, but that's been a big theme. Yeah, for let's, me. let's spin off. That's the yeah. luxury of podcasts. We can right. do whatever we want. Yeah. So, <laughs> so as you know, it's like it's been. It started off as like irrational fears and emotions coming up yeah. out of context. Like, yeah. like for me, a big one was like fear that something will happen to my children, uh -huh. and it was a very strong, almost a paralyzing anxiety like panicky like fear that would just come up yeah and I was like well you know it's a uh, it's probably common to be concerned of your children but they're up in their room safe right now there's no reason to feel this way yeah so that was kind of the beginning of it right um, but it's been actually a lot. I went through some of your course actually. Oh, did you? Called up my mom. You didn't tell me. I didn't. Oh, no. I was probably <laughs> waiting until the next time I saw you and it's been a while. Yeah. But uh, I called my mom had a bunch of uh, questions for her per yeah. your advice and and just, it, it was, I'm still working through it, but it's been a period of about three years working through a lot of the things like my grandparents and stuff have gone through. Wow. And seeing the connection has been very powerful. And why do you think that that came up? Honestly, I don't know. I just feel like it's just a, I'm just, just going along my path and continuing the shadow work just sort of happens on its own. And that was maybe the, just the next layer. Yeah. And I think that that's an interesting <laughs> insight is that that is how it works. We think that it's, oh, like I'm getting brighter, I'm getting more high vibe. And so then those things don't come up. And then all of a sudden this irrational, intense fear comes up. Right. You're like, what? That has nothing to do with me being higher vibe. And right. It's like, no, it actually does. It does, yeah. You're actually chipping away at the iceberg. Yes. You know, below the water and seeing what's going on. Yeah. So then did you figure out where that ir irrational fear came from and... How did you resolve it? Yeah, interesting. So there's, I don't know for you, about for you, but for me, there's like many layers to it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand a lot of it, but I know my grandfather lost a son. Mm -hmm. And there's one time during ayahuasca where he came to me and he came in just sort of like, I don't have spirit encounters very often. This was a straight up spirit encounter with my grandpa Whoa. on ayahuasca. And I saw him just crying and he had this like look of just intense sorrow. Wow. And I could read him. I could feel like on one hand, he lost his son. He's devastated. On the other hand, I could see he's like beating himself up over it. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what I was feeling. Like a feeling of like dread and guilt and like loss. Wow. It was like that same exact combination of emotions. 
I saw in him. So I was like, whoa. I had like this electric electricity, you know, flow through my body and it was just very, uh, that wasn't the end of it, but that was like a huge aha and kind of a confirmation for what I suspected all along. Whoa. That's super cool because in the ancestral work, <laughs> for those that don't know about it, the key is to figure out where the root cause of that irrational fear that you were experiencing mm -hmm. isn't your irrational fear. Yeah, right. It's passed down. Yeah. So then you have to find the root cause. Right. And in this case, like the ayahuasca illuminated where this was sourced. Yeah. And did that, that was like the inroads for you then to be like, oh, I think it may have come from there. Or when did you put together yeah. the pieces? I don't know what this, it, honestly, what it was. It was like the end of that and the beginning of what I'm working with now, which is like my own trauma. My mm. own childhood trauma, I think, is almost what made me, made those other things relevant. There's like an association. Right. So now I'm working through my own stuff, yeah. which I think the ancestral was like, I don't know, getting me ready for it. I don't, I don't know how that works exactly. But now I'm dealing with my own stuff, which seemed to be like the true sort of source of why I'm feeling that in my body, in my psyche, energy body right now. Yeah. That's my current conclusion. I'm constantly reevaluating as time goes on yeah. now. To me, you know, from my from my advantage, that seems like a good assessment. Really? <laughs> yeah, okay. definitely. Have you found that to be the case with yourself? Yes. And some of the stuff, okay, interesting. Absolutely. I mean, my teachers always say, you know, go straight to the parents, go straight to your childhood stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's nice, but that is a beast to it approach. Is right on. It's a beast to approach. And so for me, I always prefer, and the way that I work with clients is it's, Go to your ancestors first because you're still connected to them. You're playing out their crap. So you need to clear it out anyways. Yeah. And then when you can look at your grandparents and the great grandparents, you can understand why your parents are the way that they are. Yeah. Which then can lead to a shit ton of compassion. Yes. And then can help in that transition of working <laughs> on your own personal stuff. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Right now it's like, it's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> but the, one of the cool things, I don't know if you found it, is it's really changing my relationship with my parents. Is it? And in like a real way. Yeah. Where I'm getting closer with them and then we're really like reconnecting in a way I never thought possible. That's and when I think you know really always taking place. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been fascinating. <laughs> All of it. That's so cool. Yeah. It's so fun because we haven't talked in a while. So I know. I'm like, oh, here's, yeah. your, here's the like personal update. Yeah. And for me, I've been going through a lot of the same things. Really? I mean, I mean, I've already been doing my ancestral work for like a decade because that's a huge theme of what I do in mm -hmm. my work. Um, but particularly my parent work and particularly my mom work was mm. the major theme of 2020 and wow. completely changed the course of my life and future relationships. Yes. <laughs> so it's interesting that we're both going through that right now. Right, right. Know? Yeah, it seems so simple. Like, why wouldn't I have gone to this in the, <laughs> from the get-go? But now I see why, because it, it's like, it's, it's challenging. For me, it's like a very visceral sort of experience that I'm yeah. slowly almost being guided to go through at my own pace, at a healthy pace. Yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah. <laughs> like being super kind. It's not like ripping off a band-aid. That would, I think, be reckless. Yeah. For, for some traumas anyway, you know, for a lot of people probably. Definitely. I, I, I agree. Ripping off the band-aid of, of that kind of thing. That that was the trauma, was a rip off of a band-aid. Like we don't need to continue doing that. That's no. not the healing approach. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's really interesting. I feel like, again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, starting to make those calls or transitions, you know, in these, in the job and this and upgrading and following the call. It's the secret that Bashar doesn't say. Well, I think he does maybe say it now, but following your excitement. And it's like, that will lead you to let more of yourself. It's <laughs> like, ha, ha, ha. As you go through more of who you thought you were or weren't even aware you thought you were. Yeah. Until yeah. you go through the dark night of the soul. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's like, it's all, it's all connected. So what do you suggest for people coming up with and facing those things? Because we were talking about coming up and, and being honest about the beautiful and creative and exciting, beautiful, you know, things coming up to do in life, that purpose, that alignment. But when someone's in that place of, okay, these fears are coming up or this trauma is coming up, like what's the best place that you found? Because you're kind of in it and yeah. you've just gone through a lot of it to start approaching right. that. Those, that beast. <laughs> yeah, if I could go back, I would have sought help 
a long time ago. Because uh, I, I was like bugging out for years, awake at night about the ancestral fears. Yeah. I didn't really think they could literally be a thing, even though intuitively I suspected it. Yes. And now dealing with my own sort of childhood trauma, it's almost like, I don't think everyone needs help. I think we're all guided to where we need, but that'd be advice. Like, you don't think you have to do it alone. There's like experts that can help you through it. Oh. You know, and whoever you feel like you're resonance with or attracted to, or uh, it might yeah. be a book yeah. that comes into your life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like as people go through it, they'll be given synchronously what exactly what they need to help them through it. Mm. So you did hear that it would have been helpful to get assistance. I, looking that. back, I could tell it would have been. Yeah. Yeah, like like I struggled for years, and I I started listening to your stuff about ancestral healing, and I was like, oh my god, that's what I've been going through. She makes it seem so like not as you know it wasn't as dire as I was making it I thought I was right. projecting it into like my real life and I thought something yeah. was gonna happen to my kids as an example yeah and I was thinking like why why does it have to happen <laughs> kind of stuff yeah and I was bugging out about it unnecessarily yeah well it has to be that dire or else we wouldn't look at it yeah you're, you're probably right that's yeah. that's what I've seen with it mm. is it's just it will just plague you like yes. your, your issues no are it. exactly because otherwise you would never look at it and most people just sit there and run, but you're courageous and you faith, you went into it and faced it. Yeah. Like you said, cause I kind of had to, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we had wasn't to. going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so what else is, um, any other insights or beautiful things that, Oh, I want to, I know something I'll ask. How have you liked Sedona? Mm. And what is your experience actually living here? Cause you would come and visit quite often. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But what is it like now living here at least part time? Right. It's certainly given me a whole new respect for people who live here. Like, yeah, <laughs> okay. like we, me and my family, you know, we do retreats here yeah. and I've been coming here on vacation for three and four day spurts for many years. Yeah. But last summer we spent about, I think six weeks right over by Thunder Mountain yeah. over there in West Sedona. And there was multiple times I had my bags packed and I was like, I'm getting out of here. I don't care if we got two weeks left. And I was just like up at night ruminating about whatever issue Sedona was throwing in my face. And I was like, my goodness, this is a relentless <laughs> acceleration of an already sort of relentless, relentless spiritual process. Yeah. Um, but anyway, now we have a home here in uh, the village and we come and go probably half and half or here yeah. half the time in Las Vegas half the time. So now I feel acclimated and now it's to a point, hence why I said we're feeling like we very well might move is because now it's like becoming less and less taller it's like harder to live in las vegas mm -hmm. and we live in a beautiful part people hear that they think we're like next to a casino we're like in the mountains kind of it's real pretty suburb area but the energy is very different and it's becoming very disorienting almost to to like be there so now i feel like i'm acclimating to a point where i need to like we almost kind of need to be in a cleaner energy to yeah. to really be at peace inside mm -hmm. so yeah that's in the gist of it. <laughs> wow. So you've kind of gone over that threshold of where it was a bit challenging being in Sedona and now it's like, oh, I'm so much more this vibration that the other thing isn't working now. Yeah. Whoa. And something you said, we went hiking the one time and you said you dealt with that for a while and you recommended to, to get out of Dodge once in a while uh -huh. to like give yourself a breather. And you said, but underneath it all, there's just peace. Yeah. And that's kind of, I'm not always at peace or anything, but that's what I'm realizing is like, it's a very deep, peaceful energy here that you must align with it or else, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> or else. yeah <laughs> or else it's like it's it's like it makes you look at stuff yeah it sure does yeah I think it's one of those things where people think that they're only gonna have the positive stuff and then it ends up being whatever it needs to yeah, be yeah and sometimes it is a big breakthrough but usually before the breakthrough especially at the retreats it's the they gotta go inward a little bit before that but yeah. yeah, what do you notice? Okay, so you've visited for a lot. Mm -hmm. You have people coming to retreats. What would you suggest for people visiting here? But I think we can expand that out to all sacred sites or going to a high energy place to navigate that transition or those breakthroughs when people maybe are just visiting by themselves or in a retreat process. What do you see people going through? And like, how can they make their process a bit more easy? I would say to do the thing that you feel called to do even when, when it's uncomfortable well i'll give an example like some people at the retreats they'll come and they want to connect with people mm -hmm. and they'll they'll come and they'll realize how um how social situations are so challenging for them and the, mm -hmm. the idea 
I want to connect with people is one thing, but then the reality of them pushing outside of their comfort zone, it's so hard for them, but they know they should do it. Mm -hmm. So it's I, this one guy, I remember, I could sense that was what's going on with him. And I said, I have a challenge for you. I said, I, I, I dare you to invite yourself out during one of the breaks. And I, I could tell he was like the last thing he wanted to hear, but he knew it was true and he did it. And man, he blossomed. It was beautiful. But it's like to get those breakthroughs, sometimes you got to do the thing that you don't want to do. Yeah. Not that, so yeah, I feel like you really just got to be honest with what's being asked of you and what's right for you and do it and just trust. <laughs> I like that you're giving this message. It's a consistent thread throughout the whole thing. You got to do the thing you don't want to do. You need to take the action, right? Yeah. All of those pieces because that's really the only step forward. Unless yeah. you want to get hit by a tsunami or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're going to deal with it some other time. And when it's like in your face, this is the, this is like the path of least resistance. Even yeah. Even it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. It's the opening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It can be quick and smooth if you just jump in. Exactly. Otherwise, you're going to get struck by lightning. I was recounting to my <laughs> I was recounting to my friend here that I love the monsoons here. You haven't fully experienced a monsoon here, right? Not really. We've been here during the season, but never really the, saw it, a monsoon. It didn't really come. No. No. We're gonna call in the monsoons actually this year. It's gonna be a thing. Oh, I'll cool. keep you posted. But at one point I uh, was out and I wanted to get caught in a monsoon. And it's really intense when really? they come. Oh, it's incredible. Really? It's incredible. And I was at this point on the Mesa and I knew that I was in the storm, like I purposely put myself in the storm because I just was in a bad mood and I was like, ah, I want to be caught in the storm. <laughs> and so then I'm like, fast forward 30 minutes later and I'm freezing because it's actually really cold if you're caught in these, in these storms. And I couldn't get home because I had to cross this mesa where the lightning was striking. Wow. Yeah. And so it was like uncomfortable, you know, to be in that. But I, there was a moment that I had to run and then not get like struck. And Dang. there was that, that was the opening, <laughs> even though maybe you felt uncomfortable or scary. And I kind of feel like that's what we're talking about. Like yeah. there's an opening right now. And if you don't take it, you're going to actually get struck by like, <laughs> or you're going to get hypothermic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Wow. So it kind of reminds me of that. So I did get through it, but, uh, yeah, it's yeah. exciting. And what I find is when I, when I avoid those moments, it's like a miserable, prolonged lightning strike. Yeah. Like I've done, I've done it where <laughs> I've been. Prolonged lightning strike. Yeah. I've had it one time, I, I was uh, I already signed up to go to this like plant medicine retreat. Mm -hmm. And I, oftentimes what happens to me is that my ego senses something's coming and I get all like like uh, dramatic and resistant. And this time I, I was in such like a, the kind of the mood you were sharing about going in the storm. And I was in, the, I was, I was in that mood and I chose not to go, even uh -huh. though I knew I needed to go. Uh -huh. I knew it was coming up for a reason. I chose not to go. And I had the most miserable day you could possibly imagine. <laughs> And then everyone that went came back and they were like floating and felt amazing. And I knew uh, I was sort of dealing with it in a slow fester and I could have just went in and had a breakthrough mm. and been done with it. So then how do you navigate? Because you were just saying with the childhood trauma stuff that it needs to be gentle, mm. right? And then in this case, it needs to be, you need to just go into it. So yeah. how do you discern when, which approach is better? Like that you're just avoiding or that you actually do need to be gentle with yourself. Because I think a lot of spiritual people, including myself, are like, oh no, I just, I do need self-care time and I do need to yeah. take care of myself. So when's the time to actually go for it versus nurture? In my experience, 99% of the time, it's like you go for it. But this, this recently I'm learning like, it's like a new, it's a new thing, unfoldment for me, realizing, well, this might be too much. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll give you an example. I was, it's really kind of trippy, actually. Okay. I was up in the mountains in Las Vegas, and I was, like, meditating and sort of tuning into my body. And what happened to me, I was hit by a firecracker when I was a kid. Real serious accident. Oh, my God. I know, I know. <laughs> but I was, I was, like, tuning into it, and I felt, like, this panic come over me, this panic, like a fear, like, like a bomb was going to go off. And I also just felt like, too many memories were coming back too quickly, but I was so uncomfortable. I was like, I want to get through it. I'm going to dive into it. Mm. And I opened my eyes and there was a freaking chipmunk right next to me coming at me. <laughs> and it wouldn't leave me alone. And I, I had like the, it's going to sound crazy, but I had the intuition. It was like, this is not the time to do this, Victor. Oh. But I felt so unresolved. I said, screw it. I, I can't relax here knowing that chipmunk is there. Uh -huh. So I left this little cave and went on this other rock and I'm sitting there going into it. A bird almost hits me, flies almost right into my head, inches away. And to, it's going to sound so wacky to your audience. No, it isn't. But it really felt no, like the universe was saying, 
this is not the time mm. to do it. Mm -hmm. And I've had that type of thing happen a couple times. Yeah. Like one time I woke up in the middle of the night and all these memories were coming up and I was like just laying there and I had the idea, go watch a movie, go watch a movie. And I trusted it. Like, go, it's not the time. Yeah. So it's coming off in layers. But normally, in my experience, it, this is like a new thing for me. Yeah. I do find that when you're working with like little parts of yourself, they need, they need the gentleness. Yeah. Like if it's an inner child's like wound. It is, yeah. They need like a lot of space, a lot of gentleness. Yeah. But every other part ne yeah. needs ferocity <laughs> in yeah. action. That's right. what I found, you yeah. know? And there's always that knowing. Yeah. That for me, it's like I had a knowing this is not the time. Right. Other times, I had a knowing I should go do this uncomfortable thing. And if you just like, sort of trust your body, trust your instincts, then it's usually pretty obvious. I love that. You just got to be honest with yourself. That's Okay, self-honesty. Yeah. Okay, this is good. This is really <laughs> good. And so for people, just to kind of round out, for people at this pace, this place in life and the collective with everything going on right now that are really sensitive, because you talk to, speak to empaths a lot, what would you suggest to them? Because a lot of people that I'm hearing, it's like, oh my gosh, like psychically, it's like a lot right now. And energetically, it's a lot. And a lot of people's stuff is coming up because yeah. they are more forced to be with their families or, you know, the family thing's kind of, I think, a big theme coming up. Yeah. Or who do you really care about? And then maybe you don't actually care about that person. Like yeah. in those moments of strong, empathetic um intensity what do you suggest for people navigating these times right now so what's been hap helping me i'll say a couple things Bridget. Yeah. one of them is really just getting into my body mm -hmm. like in a real practical sort of way like i'll sometimes stare at a, a, a doorknob and like really try to like remember i'm a physical being as well as an etheric spirit mm -hmm. and grounding into my body takes me out of other the, the, no, the energetic noise of other people. Mm -hmm. I also found, this is just for me, I don't know if this is the case with all empathic people, but I found that I, I, I think that one of the reasons I've been so notoriously empathic was because I was disassociating from my own stuff, my own traumas. Wow. So I like popped out and now oh, I'm so intuitive and so empathic, but really it was like I was afraid to be in my own body because yeah. in my own body is where all the trauma is. Yeah. So my advice would be to get into your own body, go into nature. You can also give yourself a little reprieve when you need it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's tough. I know some people that see us, we're in Sedona, they're like, wow, must be nice. I live in a city. Must be nice, but is there hearing? Yeah. It can have its challenges. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you can even like, I remember as an example, many years ago, I was getting triggered heavily by the presence of my parents. Mm -hmm. And they came and they were visiting and they would stay with us for like a whole week. Yeah. And we were living on a state, so it was like a big deal. And it just felt very draining and I felt cracked open. So what I would do is I'd go in my room and lay on the bed by myself for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. No meditation. I'd just sit there mm -hmm. and sort of like let my energy kind of move about freely. And I would feel like after that, I'd feel kind of refreshed and renewed enough. Yeah. So just, I think self-care, taking time for yourself, grounding into your body can nice. be very helpful. I think that's what do you think? Would you would you suggest anything different or similar? I, I loved everything that you shared, and I totally agree. And I think especially, well, as I've been going deeper into this trauma work and doing different trainings with it and stuff, there's almost a direct correlation that they're saying between childhood trauma and, and, and like being an empath. Yeah. Or like a highly sensitive empath. Because being empathic and feeling other humans is really good. Yeah. And that's developed by actually the father. The father has the influence really? in, on the kids to become empathic. Hmm. Yeah, I watched this whole, whole Jordan Peterson thing about it, which was really, really oh, cool. interesting. So good job, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> You're helping your kiddos out. Um, but yeah, so I think that there is a lot to say for doing our doing our trauma work and being able to come back to our bodies so that we don't have to... Yeah, experience so much in the hollowness of us not being there. But like when you're home, you get to say what happens or doesn't happen. Yeah. But when you're vacant, I mean, someone could just break in and do whatever the break right. is. And it happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say, I agree. And also, I think, I know some people might hear that and feel like I don't want to lose my psychic senses. But yeah. I find I don't. Yeah. When I'm in my body... It's, I'm still very perceptive, but at 
in my in a controlled way. Yeah. Like I'm not sucked into other people's drama as much. If I want to go into it and you know analyze it, if I choose to, I could. Yeah. But from a safer, more grounded place. Yeah, I've really found that too. Yeah. Yeah, I was just helping my friend uh, process some pretty intense, deep stuff, and it was at the end of my uh, a long trip, and I was tired, and so it'd be at that point I would just be like, I'm so sensitive, you know, and porous, I can't do this. But now <laughs> I was like. Yeah, what you got? Oh, like, yeah. like I could, I could stay with it. Yeah, and like tune in and do everything I needed to psychically, but still be in my own frame. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. I used yeah. to see the whole empath thing as like a curse. I'll always be cracked open all the time, but it's like, no, it's like I've gotten better with it. You know, That's more awesome. more control. Yeah. So moving forward in these next few months, mm -hmm. uh, what do you have on the horizon for yourself? And also, what do you suggest for people as we move, you know, to the end of 2021 and we're moving in this new phase of the collective? Any advice uh, that you'd have for anyone? Yeah, so for me, I feel like I'm at like a decision point. Mm -hmm. Like we actually are. We have to choose where we're going to live because the kids go to school next fall. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm feeling like it's time for me to make the big tough decisions knowing and accepting that it's a best it's a guess i don't know sometimes for me my guidance is very clear do this mm. do that now it's like it's like there's choices there are options i'm just going to do the best i can and so for me it's like i'm getting into well, like grounding into a, a new more permanent lifestyle with my family which involves a lot emotionally spiritually everything yeah um but my advice for other people it's really all what we've been talking about. It's really just, just, yeah, I like what Bashar says. I like, he, and you probably remember him saying this. He does it quite a bit. He talks about like the spiritual journey. No, he always, he says, you always know what you need to know when you need to know it. Mm -hmm. And I look at it like we have a candle in a dark cave with many spin-offs. And mm -hmm. a lot of us feel like I can't see up ahead. I'd like to see more. I don't want to fall off a freaking cliff. So I'm going <laughs> to sit here where it's safe. Uh -huh. But if you take a step, that candle illuminates another step and another step. Oh. So it's like, take that next step. You already, most of you know what it is. Just trusting as best you can. Yeah. And then eventually the universe will prove itself. And it's like, you can really start taking these leaps more readily with less resistance because you know you're, even though it's the unknown, you're, you're jumping up in vibration and your life is improving. So look, everyone's got a chance right now, Bridget, to really like massively improve their life. Mm -hmm. But it'll involve change, it'll involve the shadow work, it'll involve letting go of their comforts and, and dumping into the unknown. Yeah. And that's not fun, it's not easy. Yeah. I'm still doing the best I can, but it's an opportunity to live an amazing and rich life. Whoa, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that was good, that was inspiring. <laughs> good. Awesome, and I've never heard that analogy. That's beautiful. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's illuminating. So where can people find you? Most people probably know you. That yeah. See this. Um, but where where are you nowadays? Currently on YouTube or Instagram, just my name, Victor Odo. You'll see me. There's a bunch of fake accounts. I don't know if you're getting that, but you'll see the real Victor Odo, and yeah. that's me. <laughs> and a book soon. Yes, that's right. <laughs> right? Yep. Awesome. About awakening uh, cycles, about the different themes of awakening, different types of ex like ancestral healing is a chapter as an example. Awesome. And just sort of like channeled advice for people in those types of situations. Oh, that's going to be about. so helpful. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I had a, I had a great time. It was nice to catch up. We kind of caught up, <laughs> uh, caught up with each other on camera yeah. and everything. But it was an honor to be here, and thank you so much for having me. And your audience is amazing, by the way. Oh. I did that live. I did a live that third eye thing with yeah. them a long time yeah. ago, and I was like, man, a couple of them knew me, but most of them didn't. And it was they were they were so cool. Aww. Great people. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Victor. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone.